If you ever wanted to learn how to trade the gold market, well, you're in luck because in this video, we're going to go over my game plan for the upcoming week so that way trading gold can be just a little bit easier. And in this video, we're also going to talk about my game plan in terms of my entries, my exits, my profit targets, and all of those zones that we have to pay attention to in order to make smart decisions inside of the market. So stick around to the end of this video because it's definitely going to help simplify and transform your trading. So as usual, let's go ahead and start on the weekly time frame and we can see really easily that the week closed, well actually it just closed bullish. So it's not as strong as the past week, but nevertheless it did close bullish. So there's a lot of things that could happen inside of the market. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that looks like when we get to the game plan section of this video. But let's just analyze price the way it is. So right now, we can see that price has made a new all-time high inside of the market at 27.59. So let's go ahead and mark off that level. So we're going to take our rectangle tool and just draw a little box there. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm also going to mark off this level at 26, let's say 35, mainly because we do have support in this area. And then I'm going to mark off another level here on the weekly time frame at 2486. Now, this is really, really far from current price action. So for it to come all the way down here, it will have to take a lot of volume in order to be able to do that. So we're probably not going to chart anything below this. Really below this is fine, but let's just go to right here. So anyway, let's go down to the daily time frame and reset our views. So now we can see a lot more detail inside of the market and there are other levels that I want to draw. So let me go ahead and mark off this level right here. And this is at 27, let's say 2713. This is a really interesting level that I was actually watching to see if it would break this past week, as you can see that it did not. But let's go ahead and mark off another level right here at, what is this, 26, let's say 75, 2675. That's a good level. And then another level I wanna mark off here on the daily time frame. let me move this over a little bit is 2600 flat that's a really nice round psychological level and then the other level that i do want to mark off here is going to be 25 and probably i said this was going to be the bottom but let's get rid of that and let's make this the bottom because i can't see price in the next week falling like 2000 pips in order to get to this point so actually yeah more like 2500 pips that would be a lot for it to fall in order to get back to this level so let's just stop there and then let's go to h4 now we can see we have a lot more levels on this time frame and a lot more zones to actually trade from so one of the things i'm going to do is actually make these levels a little bit slimmer Okay, cool. So now that we're on the H4 time frame, all I did was just make these zones a little bit slimmer because as you go down in time frames, the rectangle that you draw, say on the weekly, gets bigger and bigger. So we just want to keep it neat. So anyway, so let's look at all of these different zones now on the H4 time frame. This gives us tradable zones in order to possibly take trades from and just because price breaks a level or something like that doesn't mean you're going to automatically take a trade from that level but now that we're in an h4 time frame i'm also looking at these levels just to make sure that they make sense and that everything looks neat so this looks great this looks great and then if we go over here we got nice support and rejection here over here we got nice resistances on the bottom here nice supports we do have some overhang right there and then if we look over here, we have some nice rejections at this level. We may refine that on a lower time frame. Just something I see right now. We do have somewhat of a support right here. Okay, great. So let's go down to the H2 time frame. And once again, let's just look at these levels just to make sure that they're nice and neat. This looks great. 
here. So right here, we do have this candle that broke down and then this other candle that broke back up. And then we also have this rejection right here. So what I like to do at times is just to play around with the levels just to see if they look good. But before we do that, I'm going to look over to the left and I do see some consolidation and rejections throughout this level. So I'm just going to move this level just to see what looks good to me. So I kind of like that actually, but let's move it down to here. And okay, I kind of like this, but I think I really like this. This is kind of where it was before, but basically this level is 2667. And the reason why I like my level right here is because right here we do have some sort of a, of a support pro, uh, price came up. And then it came down and retested this level again before pushing off and making all of this. And then over here, we do have some rejections all throughout this zone. And this is on the H2 time frame. So when we go down to the H1 time frame, we might refine this a lot more. But yeah, we do have a push up and some consolidation over in here. So I'm okay with that for right now. And then this level right here, kind of looking at the same thing, just trying to see where this level looks best to me. So I want to prioritize price that happened more recently. So I think I'm just going to keep it right here at 26.36 or 35 at this moment. So let's go ahead and look at this level. This is pretty much lining up perfectly. We have all these rejections through here. And then we also have some more rejections through here so that looks good to me right now and if we look at this very last level i'm just going to move this down just a little bit so that way we're sitting at 25 48 25 49 obviously really close to 25 50 nice round psychological level and that is looking amazing so let's go down to h1 in this area we do see price kind kind of like rest right here at this level at 2717 it's really close to 15 but let's see if i just move it just a hair just so that way these two candles let me zoom in it's a little hard to see so that way these two candles right here are sitting right on top of my line now this is sitting at 2713 just moved it down 10 pips but it looks cleaner to me so i like that and this is all looking good because we have a rejection a resistance here and then a push up so that looks good Okay, so going down to my other levels, let's just take a quick look. So this is the one that we adjusted on the last time frame, and I wanted to see how this looked. So let me push this back up and then scoot in so that way I could see what's happening over to the left. See if I like this better. I do. So we have this support right here, and this is at 26.69, 26.70. So I really like 70 a lot more. And we still have this little rejection, all these rejections throughout here. Now we do have some price action right here that's kind of a consolidation, kind of a bit messy. Price is still respecting this level, so I want to keep it right there. Let me save my work. Okay, cool. So now we're going down to this next level. Let's go more to recent price action. So we have this little rejection. It's kind of a gap here. We have support. And then we have a lot of choppiness all throughout this entire zone. Now this, since it happened in the past and then price action did clean up in the future, so probably not going to really base much off of this right here. What, I've, what I have right here is good enough for me and the way that I trade. And then looking at this level right here, so we do have some wicks in this area and let me look to the left we do have some wicks in this area okay so let me see what this would look like if i push this level up just getting it a little bit closer to the bodies and basically just covering a lot of these wicks so one two three four five six wicks that is covering and we are now at ooh, i like this better 2605 so pretty much in this zone and you have to think of all of these levels as zones they are not exact price points all zones especially when you are trading the live market things won't go to exact prices it'll kind of go in the range so you got to be thinking that way when you're trading
Okay, so now that we've drawn our levels, let's go ahead and come up with a game plan for this upcoming week. Now, this upcoming week is a little tricky, especially because we've seen a tremendous amount of buying in this market for the past few weeks. It's really interesting price action from that standpoint. And this happened this last week. So actually a couple of days ago, I was able to have this big move right here for the trade that I took and be able to take profits along the way. And then also set in my stop losses somewhere around here. So that way, at least they were stopped out in profit. And no one was expecting this at all. I was not expecting it. Other people that I talked to that are doing really big numbers in the market were not expecting this at all. So big surprise, definitely cleaned up and took out a lot of buyers inside of this big trend right here, but then price did push up. And then I did take another trade basically just trying to wait for price action to clean up. I did take a trade here, but unfortunately I closed it a little bit early and wasn't able to capitalize on all of this that took place. So mainly because I didn't want to get this, get caught up in action like this. So I ended up closing the trade early for a small loss, but ended up the week in profit because in this trade, I was only risking a part of the profits that I made from this trade over here. One thing that I've learned that has really helped me scale up my trading is basically to be able to take trades and then use a small portion or a portion of those profits and take other setups that you may see inside of the market. Sometimes it works out and it's great. Sometimes it doesn't. And then sometimes you uh, get out of the trade too early and don't get to capitalize on all of this. So, you know, it's just part of trading, but it's all good. So the game plan that I have for this upcoming week, and I'm actually going to use these. So I do see... Um, this part right here where it basically stopped uh, up here at 27.47, really close to 27.50. And no one really knows what the market is going to do, especially because this is the week right before elections. So with elections, there's a lot of uncertainty and some people are hedging their positions where basically they are taking profits on gold. Some are adding positions. So you just don't really know what's going to happen. And then also in November, we also have FOMC, which we will find out whether or not there will be another rate cut and if there will be another big rate cut. So a lot of things that could potentially happen. I don't, I don't know if I will trade all that much this upcoming week. I may if I see something that's just like amazing, but I'm probably just gonna chill and just enjoy some of my profits this upcoming week. But what I would do is basically, I do see some structure right in here. And this level right here kind of lines up with this. So here's a level that I want to mark off here. So this could be a tradable zone right here at 27.39, really close to 27.40. And I do like this level. So potentially price price could obviously continue to push up or price could pull back and then go up. Or what gold tends to do is do somewhat of a deeper retracement, possibly not breaking this low, but somewhere in here and then continue to push up. That's if if the market wants to continue to push up just a little bit more before the elections. I mean, we just never really know. So that's pretty much a game plan for buys. So at this point, I'm still pretty much bullish on this market. But one thing that would possibly change that perspective would be a break below this level right here at 2713. So we can see from a technical standpoint that price did push up here. It stopped in the zone and then pushed up more. And then even though it did this big sell off right here, it stopped pretty much in the zone again, pushed up. And then this almost came to it, not breaking the slow and continue to push up, making a new high, at least a higher, greater than this high or this lower high right here signaling that price wants to continue to push up. Now, how much is going to push up? We obviously do not know, but that's why I like to plan for both sides. So my game plan is basically below here, B sells, and then above here is buys. 
So, and I'm looking for a closure. So at least an H1 closure above this level in order for me to be like, okay, I'm going to continue to buy. And then here I'm looking for a potential closure here. It may be a little bit tricky on the downside, especially because we do have so much bullish volume inside of this market. So just because a candle or something happens here, I'm not just going to be like, okay, instantly sell, but I need to see you know, this is essentially my bias for price below this level. I got to see if price comes down, comes down and then pushes back up because we see that on gold all the time. Or if price comes down, creates some sort of market structure and then continue to break these lows and then push down that way. So that's that's what I'm talking about when I talk about I want to see some sort of structure form. But like I said, basically, this is my major structure level and something below here, depending on how market structure is formed, I will be looking for sales into this level. And then, of course, as always, just kind of look at structure here on the side and just see where the obstacles are, or where you may have issues or where issues may have presented themselves in the past. So right here. At 2702, this is a nice round, almost a really nice round psychological level. So, um, like I said, price could do something weird in here and then shoot up. I definitely see that happening on gold because it happens quite a bit. And then also looking to the left, we could see this level right here potentially being an area of a bounce. And then this is just really messy. So I wouldn't even touch this in here, to be honest. But if you go down on lower time frames, you may be able to find more structure. But typically, doing some sort of analysis all the way down to H1 works out for me. So when it comes to this particular market for this upcoming week, this is my game plan. I know it's a little bit different from what you normally see on this channel, but there's two major events that are coming up in the next 10 days or so. And I definitely want to make sure that I'm being careful. I want to make sure that I'm being thoughtful and not just taking random trades just because price is breaking a level. So anyway, hope that this was really helpful for you and your trading. If so, let me know down in the comment section below so that way I can continue to make these videos because I only want to make them if you want to see them. So I'll see you next time.